Yes, me ducks and drakes. Good evening, Kombanwa. Welcome. Happy birthday, Celia. It's so basically this is your birthday party, I think. It's uh, you and me and a hundred people in the Zen Den. I got one foot in the Zen Den, one foot in your front room, Celia. Happy birthday, mate. Hey, look. I'm on my, my favourite beer tonight, <clears throat> so that I can uh, toast you. Mm. Ah, lovely. <sighs> At dawn. That's the ditzy, the, uh, the Chinese bamboo flute. Ah, it goes over here. I've moved everything so I can reach it, so I don't have to, never mind, get on my knees to pick an instrument up. <clears throat> Very much been looking forward to seeing you, finishing the weekend together. Got one premiere one world premiere one stream premiere tonight i kept changing my mind today about what i wanted to play and i was changing the tune list right up until six o'clock but i know what i want to do now and what i want to do next is complete the celebration of junior walker celebrating 25 years tomorrow since we lost the great man so i 
mean, Junior Walker never got kind of um, chilled and relaxed. I don't think he ever did in his life, but this one is... It's not as frenetic as some of them. It's a groove. It's a groove one. Great Junior. Fantastic. Cleo's Mood, that one is called. And I think it's only fitting that we should repeat the Junior Walker haiku written by the haiku master himself, Mr. Val Schultz, him of Nottinghamshire. And by the way, Celia, it's not only the chatters that are wishing you happy birthday. Everybody wanted to make sure that you got a big, massive happy birthday from the whole audience, whether they're on the screen or off the screen. So greetings from Danby, from Nottinghamshire, from Cherry Lane just over there. So, Junior Walker, tomorrow, 25 years on, joyous, sad, great horn player, continues to give. Yes, Junior Walker, oh! Ah, now before we really settle into the show, I would like us. I would like us. Not if you're eating, because I know some of you just put me on to the side while you're tucking into your dinner, and you're excused if you're still knife and forking. But otherwise, I want you just to relax and just roll your shoulders a little bit, and. With me, just take one full breath. Like a, I call this a mountain air breath. You know, like you've walked out the chalet <laughs> into the, I don't mean at Butlins, in the Swiss Alps, into the fresh, pure mountain air. And you go, <sighs> ah, 
So in through your nostrils, out through your mouth, fresh mountain air. Come on, two, three. Hold it and... And this time, don't do this with a drink in your hand. And I, I'm going to try not to uh, knock an instrument over or a candle over. As we breathe in through our nostrils, we're going to raise our hands. All smooth, the shoulders are not raising until the hands are up. So, you just put your drink down first, didn't you? And then through the mouth. Little roll of the shoulders. And one more and then I'll let you off. Come on, feels better, doesn't it? <laughs> Breathing, we don't think about it, do we? Because we just, we just think it's something we do automatically. It's the first thing we do when we're born and it's the last thing we do before we snuff it. So we don't think about it. Well, some of us don't. But you can breathe well and you can breathe badly. And, you, you know, when we get anxious and, and uptight, we breathe high. Oh, I, I, I've forgotten that I'm late. For, it's everything's high. But, and we can, one great way to relax is to take your breathing back down. Relax your upper body. Breathe from low like the air is anywhere. I'm going to shut up now. But especially in times of COVID, man, breathing. Because it gets, it gets your respiratory thing, doesn't it? So... Remember to breathe well, <laughs> please. Right, I'm going to stop preaching. Bring the candle back in. I'm going to have a drink. Because it's a party. That beer I'm drinking, that's from the Isle of Skye. And so is this next piece. Well, it's inspired by the Isle of Skye. It's, uh, there's a place on Skye called Flordigari. This is a piece written by my great buddy, no longer with us, but still my great buddy. He's still with me, Mr. Jim Diamond. And he wrote this song called The Road to Floor de Gary and he's actually playing guitar on this version as well and uh, beautiful beautiful strings by Peter Peter there's his other name I was on the inside hang on <laughs> I need to know his second name now this is a missing new CD I'm not plugging it because we haven't got many left but I'm going to play uh, few tunes off this tonight. Peter Whitfield. I knew it was a W and I always forget. Thank you, Peter, for the beautiful strings that you played on my records. The Road to Florida, Gary.
The Road to Florida Gary on the Little Whistle. Brenda, you're back. I finally found a way to do a thousand years for you. So, not tonight. It's work in progress. I am working hard on it. My good mate Stuart Collingwood has done a, a track, a piano track, and we're going to make it work for you. It's been on my conscience since about April when you asked for it. It's coming. It's on the back burner and it's moving slowly forward. Yeah, I do love that tune. Great writer, Mr. Jim Diamond. Clever man.
Shiro Sunset. Veronica on the violin. Oh, what a player. Unbelievable. She is a member of the Czech National Symphony Orchestra. She lives in Prague. And I bribed her to play on that track when we were touring in Japan together. In exchange for her gorgeous playing, I gave her some money and a lesson in improvisation. It seemed a fair exchange. And I paid for the taxi to the studio. I suggested we walked. No. Aha! <clears throat> nice to see you, Darren, by the way. Welcome. You got a drink? Yeah. <sighs> Let's see if uh, I can summon from the vaults the one and only. <laughs> he's, he's on the stream as much as I am. <clears throat> Mr. Simon Goulding. One of his favourite tunes, and uh, it's got me convinced now. It's called Lagrimas Negras. It's by Miguel Matamoros. Isn't it, mate? Yes.
He never disappoints. Mr. Simon Goulding on the bass guitar. SimonGoulding.com. Find him on the web. Buy his beautiful triple album, Recuerdos. That was the way that was stocking down a bit. Thank you, Simon. We'll hear him later on in the stream. But we won't see him again. Maybe until next week. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Ah, oh, fantastic. Do you guys eat a lot of apples? I mean, I don't love apples, but I quite like them. I eat them because they're good for me and, you know, they keep the doctor away and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> keep you out of hospital. But um, they take ages to eat. I don't know it's because I'm old and my teeth are knackered, but I seem to... <laughs> You've got to set aside 20 minutes to eat an apple, haven't you? I'm enjoying your party, Celia. Oranges are a bit quicker, depending on how sharp your knife is. Talking of food, as we are, uh, Sally made some kind of more regular porridge this morning. I mean, it was still, a, she's getting a bit, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit cheeky. Um, had a bit of cinnamon in it. Um, something else. Can't remember what else was in it. Um, but then I added some of my special broccoli porridge. And uh, I don't know, it's a particular, particularly feisty concoction at the moment but she was she was very disrespectful she said um, it looks like a load of old mould that you've put onto my porridge I mean not her dish but the porridge what she had made I thought that was a little bit disrespectful but you learn to take it Chris Bannister is the only human being who's ever kind of taken a floret out of my book and tried it himself and, and uh, he quite liked it you choke on them Jen yeah they're, they're a troubling fruit oh, apple strudel I mean that's more like it that makes them soft <laughs> not you doctor no no I'm not trying to get you away oh turmeric here yeah. now that really is good for uh, I am not the person to be saying what's good for you, am I? I'm not an example to us all. I used to be an example to us all, but no longer. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, grapes are a lot easier. Now, over the months, the many months that we've been meeting together in this secret, illicit Zen Den of ours, <coughs> I have had frequent requests for a tune called Missing You. In fact, I won't flash the cover again. But it's the title track from the album, obviously. And I've searched and searched and searched and tried and tried and tried to find or to recreate a backing track for it and failed miserably. But I finally kind of gave up and I thought, well, I'll phone Mr Ed Poole, who was the... Uh, producer of that track and the co-writer and played everything else except the bits I played I said Ed you haven't but by any chance still got the files for that you can kind of do me a, a track minus the sax it took him all of three minutes so ashamed but so, so full of joy too I could play Missing You for you yeah and I'm going to. There. Don't try to stop me. I'm going to do it. Don't pull me plug out. And it's, it's, it's so apt as well, isn't it? That's what, that gutted me as well, missing you. That's, it's the kind of... It's the mantra of the lockdown. We're missing everybody, missing our friends and missing our family and missing other musicians and missing audiences but we've got this yay
Thank you, Mr. Edward Pool, Edo san. You're the man. <coughs> Love that tune. Thank you very much, Mr. Ed Pool. My co writer. And uh, the writing process, I so clearly remember the, the feeling of developing that tune. I was in Tokyo, as I often am, and taking walks, going to gardens, listening to what Ed had sent me, and coming up with fragments of melody, singing them into my phone, you know, quietly, respectfully. <laughs> and eventually the whole tune emerged and uh, I borrowed some studio time from my boss over there the same studio actually that I recorded um, Veronica in for Shiro Sunset and uh, recorded the, the sax sent it back to Ed and he went yes mate the song was born <coughs> yeah and the title was Ed's. I'm not so good at titles. Shiro Sunset was mine, but the title took longer than, than the melody. And I can remember where I was when I... Anyway, yeah. Waffling. Come on, Snakey. Let's have another song. <laughs> and another one from, uh, from the same album. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's missing you all the way to the end now. <clears throat> and uh, the area of Tokyo that we uh, that we stay in when we're working over there is called Akasaka. And uh, so this is another piece that I wrote over there in the boss's studio <clears throat> between shows. And uh, in fact, there's two pieces stuck together here. There's the Akasaka air. And then uh, we'll go into something that will get you dancing around the living room. Hopefully. I wanted a little... I um, wanted to use a little boron loop for this. So... You guys talk amongst yourselves while I find it. And what did I call it? Oh, I know what I called it. <laughs> I spend all the day putting these things together. and It's the second track I've lost today. So, um, Sally's just reminded me that the tea towels are selling like hotcakes. Well, kind of. And, uh, I think they're about half gone. So he ordered a hundred and sold fifty. They haven't arrived yet. The Zen towel with fifty haikus on it. Hmm. So here's the Akasaka Air. Thank you. 
Uh, were you dancing? Were those legs kicking? I hope so. So I told you about the Akasaka Air. The second piece was called the Shannon Pint. And without going into the full story, it was uh, inspired by and meant to conjure up the image of the entire Lisa Stansfield band circa, I don't know, late 80s running from the aeroplane which was stopped in Shannon Airport to pick up passengers on our way to America. Running from the airport to the bar and smashing down a pint of Guinness and getting back in time before the plane took off to go to America. You couldn't do that these days, could you? But it always makes me smile and that was such an exciting period of my life it was the first world tour and the first top of the pops and all that kind of stuff and uh, I love Lisa and her music and all that it was just a happy time I mean all times are happy but that was, well most times are and I was particularly happy ah the black stuff here yeah. pint of Guinness So I have your word, you were, you were actually moving. I trust you. And yet another one from Missing You. This one is called The Year of the Snake, which it was two, when we made the album, 2013, I think. It was The Year of the Snake. And uh, so I'm thinking about you as well, Debs and Elaine. I sent you that Year of the Snake card, didn't I? And uh, I was buying loads of New Year's cards when I was over that, that year. Uh, so, I did have a version of this to play along to, but it was truncated and it didn't have the solos on and stuff. So this is the full thing. I stitched it all together today. So it has a beautiful piano solo from Mr. Paul Birchall, Birchie, and then Simon on some stand-up beautiful, like half electric, half double bass thing he's got and then the drummer we had at the time was uh, I think of him as a young boy I discovered him at Leeds College of Music when he was still there he's called Ali Tyne Thine, Ali Tyne and uh, was such a brilliant player a real prodigy a good match for Simon and uh, they called him the fold he was so he was so skinny he must have only weighed about six stone and when he played his limbs were all over the place like a newborn foal <laughs> Man, could that boy play. So, this is, with a bit of luck, in its entirety, the year of the snake. We live dangerously. Yeah. Thank you. 
the year of the snake. Ali Thine on the drums, Mr. Simon Goulding and Mr. Paul Birchill Birchy. Fine troopers, all of them. We've got some great videos coming in. In, in, in case you missed all that that banter and that prep, um, because tonight is show eighty nine, so that means it's not that long till we hit the big hundred. So we thought we'd do a couple of special things, and one of them was the, um, that you guys, if you liked, could record a few seconds of yourself saying hi or doing what you do or doing something funny or and put in the title track of Time Stand Still in the background, if it's possible. But just a little bit of you saying hello, <laughs> giving us a toast or polishing your saxophone, whatever, would be lovely. And we've had some fantastic ones come in already. Some of them are a little bit surprising, Mr. Mr. Kevin Lee. I won't be... Uh, I won't be coming back to the bar and saying, hey, my pint's a little bit short. I'll be treating you with the utmost of respect and saying no more. So do do that if you'd like to, a bit of fun. Kevin, did you try and send me one on Instagram? I'm not very good on Instagram. So if you've tried, if you've tried and failed to send us a, a little video, try again or let us know and we'll sort it out. We can always help you to get it to us. Just a few seconds. And also I'm doing, um, we are going to do Snake Jam 1, the first collaboration, which would be like one of those video montages. Um, Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. And that will be ready for you guys to uh, download from the website, the backing track and your parts if, you're, uh, if you want the dots to play along too. If you're singing, I'm sure you can work it out. But if you want me to write down the inside harmonies, I will do. I love a challenge, but I'll give myself a deadline. By the end of Wednesday, that'll be on the on the Snake Davis dot rocks in the student resource page. But we'll put it on the front page as well. How to find it? So Joe is still isolating. And we're being a bit careful. We're being very careful. And we just put his food outside his room, knock on the door and run, basically. And it's upsetting because it means I can't be the daddy dustbin anymore and sort of finish anything he leaves. <laughs> I don't know why I told you that. I shouldn't have shared that with you. But so far, so good. Um, I did a little guest thing with uh, Chris Difford last night. Uh, he, he did a Zoom show, which was a lot of fun. And... Uh, just got me thinking, you know, about the the money in the music business is in the writing. And he wrote all those songs for Squeeze and stuff. I think, oh man, he won't be feeling the pain of lockdown like us musicians. <laughs> no, he is a musician, but he's a he's a writer of many many hit songs. So I remember Jim Diamond, the aforementioned, saying to me, "Snake," he said, "it's brilliant," you know. He said. I I should have known better and high ho silver. He said, that's my pension right there. He said, I love think thinking and knowing that while I'm asleep, my songs are earning me money. <laughs> I love that. Doesn't happen to me. I've got to get on the tools to earn money. But I do write, but people have got to cover your songs for you to make serious money or you've got to have hits with them. Neither of which has happened to me. Well, I once got a bit of a, a Jazz FM hit. And I got a royalty check, my first royalty check. It's 37 quid. That's better than nothing, isn't it? That's a, that's a few year bends. Oh, before we go, before we go. No, don't, 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 lo don't log off yet. It's haiku time. There's a, a gentleman called David. He's, he's an avid watcher and a supporter. He's become part of the snake family in the community. And he's a vicar, man of the cloth, as was his dad before him. And his dad was based in the Yorkshire Wolds, covering multiple churches, as many vicars do. And he didn't drive, so he covered them by foot and by bus, timing all his church services to time with the bus services, which I love. And like us musicians, he would stop at 
almost nothing to get to his gig. On one Sunday, he'd already covered half a dozen churches and he was on the four-mile walk up to his last gig of the day. And he got severely caught in a thunderstorm. And uh, decades later, David visited that church and uh, was able to read his father's entry in the in the big book, you know, and that inspired this haiku, which I think is wonderful. On long walk to Kowlam Church, vicar soaked in thunderstorm. For worship, no one came. It's kind of sad ending. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. I reckon Danny would appreciate that. I don't know if he's with us tonight, but he will be possibly given his own service but I know we'll catch up uh, and another idea for the 100th show maybe you could put your requests in for what's your favourite piece of music that we've done on the uh, I've <laughs> done on the stream or we've done together on the stream that you'd like to hear again and we'll maybe do a top 10 and I'll play the number one on the 100th show if you like me you won't remember what I've played I never do Closer tonight, another one from uh, Missing You. This is one I have played before, but not for a while. I needed to play it tonight, because, partly because I love it and partly because um, the wonderful gentleman who played guitar on this as of Friday is no longer with us. So... For Mr. Keith Ashcroft, superb musician, great guy, wonderful musician, and he owned his own van, which is always a fantastic bonus as a musician. He will not be forgotten. Definitely not. You live on in your guitar playing. So um, I'll see you before we go. that this is falling.
Thank you, Mr. Keith Ashcroft. Thank you, Simon Golding, for La Grimas. Thank you to all the musicians who contributed to this music. Thank you hugely to you guys. Thank you, Celia, for letting us have this party in your living room. Enjoy the rest of the birthday day. And uh, a couple of exciting shows coming up. So the next time we meet, next Friday, we won't be here. Well, we kind of... All right, we'll be here in the Zen Den. But in our hearts, in our imaginations, we'll be at, in Helmsley, in North Yorkshire. Beautiful part of the world, Helmsley Art Centre. I'm kind of dedicating the show to that venue. Tell you a bit about the history, my experiences there, a bit about the area if you've never been. Very beautiful part of the world. And yeah, put your thermals on. And virtually we'll meet in Helmsley next Friday. Sunday will be, it's never normal, is it? But Sunday will be down here and in your place. But then there's an extra one coming up. You've heard me uh, mention Ennerdale a couple of times over in the North West Lake District. So a week on Tuesday. Well, there'll be something at the Ennerdale stream every Tuesday. So check them out this Tuesday by all means. But a week Tuesday, I'm doing the Snake Davis All Stars featuring everybody that you've ever met on the stream. <sighs> all in one show. It might be a little bit longer than the normal. But uh, I'll give you some more details about that next Friday anyway. But um, it'll be on the set, our, our normal snaky channel that, that night. So you'll find us easy. And the same time, 7 o'clock. Tuesday the... Was that the 2nd of December? 1st of December? 1st of... I don't know. I don't know. That's the end of the minutes. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Mr. Joe. And thank you, you guys. <coughs> You take care. Have a good week. Stay safe, but be kind to each other. And breathe low. I very much enjoyed your company.